In this episode, we're talking performance, pole position, and protection as we unleash five ultimate SUVs built to get going when the road gets rough. Blast from the past, riding hard into the future. It's a gnarly off-road beast. I think they're really starting to become a craze. Complete conversions causing off-road carnage. You can just dump diesel, ignition in air, and let this thing eat. And bespoke luxury with style for every mile. I just want it over the top, show time. Even the size of the car, that you're driving an elephant. These sturdy SUVs are taking all-wheel drive in a new direction. It's a mean-ass walker, bro. <laughs> Harvester Scout would have set you back a few thousand bucks back in the day. Flash forward to right now, and these resto mods with all the trimmings cost more than a supercar. We are looking at a 1979 International Harvester Scout. The build cost on this truck costs about $275,000, but it's custom from one end to the other. Parts are hard to find for it. It's not something you're going to build every day. Way back in the 1960s, the International Harvester Scout was built for agriculture, a far cry from the modern SUV restoration experts' velocity have transformed it into. It's been decades since the last new Scout was built, and the re-emergence of these four-wheeled rust buckets has surprised the hell out of most car collectors. These award-winning customizers have turned out something special. I think they're different. You don't see them every day. They're kind of rare. I don't want this color, though. I don't even like orange. I didn't expect it does not. Look up at the undercarriage. It's clean as a whistle, man. I mean, clean. I could eat my dinner off that engine. It's badass. <laughs> it's a good truck, man. Yeah. Yeah. If I had 300 to spare, I'd purchase it. Man, I think these guys are on to something. Transformed SUVs are the ride of the future. Seeing the same thing every day isn't fun anymore. So being able to customize a different type of vintage truck is really starting to become a craze. It sure is one expensive craze, but how does this baby ride? It's got AC, it's got modern amenities. You know, we can take all the old school out of the feel and the drive and add our modern drivetrain, our modern gauges, leather seats, and give it the feel of a modern vehicle but have the look of a classic truck, and that's what seems to be the most appeal to it to everybody, and it is. I can personally testify that pulling off a project like this takes a hell of a lot of time, money, and expertise. But man, these guys have got it covered, including those badass profile poses. Gentlemen, you got all the cool you need for the ultimate custom. This is what we call a full turnkey rotisserie restoration. Put in the new engine, transmission, got all the drivetrain hooked together, fuel tank, electronics. Custom made the bumpers from scratch. We added an LED light bar. Got our color match intake we did to match the exterior paint on the truck. Really wanted to give this truck a custom look under the hood. Built the roll cage here, designed it from scratch. I don't think there's another Scout with this style of roll bar in it. Wiring the dash. Custom air intake. The exhaust. Added larger tires. We took the original stripe and made our own version of it. Fuel tank, electronic. Shackle reversal in the front. It's all about the detail and the time invested into making it right. Amen to that. But is there any part of the original ride that survived? The entire tub and sheet metal is original, believe it or not. It's very hard to get panels for this truck, so we were very lucky to be able to save all this. It's important to keep the original look of the truck, because if you start changing too many features, you don't stay true to the brand. And this 
is the best time to actually drive a truck like this. The weather's great. It's sunny out. We've got a really nice bikini top. It's open air. What's better than driving a classic truck in just the sun and wind in your hair? True words right there. From open top resto mod to the bulletproof beast. Our next ride draws its inspiration from the skies. The stealth fighter is type of style and of our design. But this luxury SUV has its wheels firmly on the ground. Get ready for stealth mode. This is the world's most expensive SUV, the Carlman King. <laughs> okay. Luciano is the chief dude behind this top dollar ride. Starting price is $1,085,000 uh, uh, US dollars. Whoa! When you are in, the, in this business for so many years, then you think, okay, now how about being a little bit uh, different? It's definitely different, Luciano. This vehicle is not symmetrical. On the right hand side, we have uh, one front door and one rear door. This is the left hand side of the car. As you can see, we have only one door. Sci fi style for every mile. Fully spec'd, the Carlman King can exceed 3.8 million bucks. Only 12 of these rides will ever be made. And for a similar price tag, you can pick up a private jet or your own tropical island. This machine rolls with full ballistic protection, and boy, does it make one hell of a statement. Instead of trying to find the perfect combination of surfaces, we try to create a, a break in the surfaces. So somehow going opposite from what design rules would ask you for. This is what we call diamond design. Cutting edge, brother. It has to be big, dominant, but in the same time, not to be so aggressive. It's absolutely unique. We created a vehicle which is uh, really highly recognizable from any point of view. It ain't just the outside that's money. Inside is pure luxury. We can both in exterior and interior design introduce several adjustments. So I guess money does buy perfection. And big bucks have made an even bigger beast. Given the size of the car, you would imagine that you're driving an elephant. But as a matter of fact, it's a very flexible and uh, nice drive. So you don't need uh, any special uh, ability to drive this car. Just a massive wallet. From the crazy Carlman King to a booming Hummer H2. I have always had a passion for cars. If you don't see this next ride coming, you'll definitely hear it, and you will never forget it. The reaction when we pull up is always a wow. I'm Rafael Capone, and here we have the Soul Asylum H2. This is the world's loudest Hummer. I just want it over the top show car. In 2014, car fan Rafael bought a secondhand Hummer H2 and changed just about everything. Major rebuild with no factory components or parts left in the build. But brother, this Hummer is all about the speakers. I like it loud, but somebody grab me some earplugs. The amount of speakers in the Solus Album H2 is 86. All of our speakers are doing different things. So let's say we have 10 10s, 36 tweeters, 14 horns, 12 subs, eight mid bass speakers, eight mid range speakers. And it is a lot of speakers. The Hummer H2 represented the pinnacle of SUV production in the early 2000s. 
but its original mission was to take military-grade engineering to the masses. Now, Raphael must really hate his neighbors. He installed 86 speakers, 11 amplifiers, and three miles of copper wire to unleash pure audio power. And it's not just the music he's blasting. You know, you can't have a vehicle this big without some train horns. So this air tank is specifically only for our train horns. We have a separate iPad system that runs the whole entire vehicle from outside. We can pick people's songs, we can play music, we can karaoke, even though we don't like the karaoke. Ain't nothing wrong with a sing-along, brother. Right here, if you look in our back, you'll see four subs across the back. We were doing a show in Texas, and we parked the wrong way, and the sun hit this and lit our fuses on fire like a, a magnifying glass. So now when we're doing shows, because we have this chrome underbody, we have to manage how we park because uh, it's dangerous. My favorite feature is because I like to be a first in the world type of guy is the stone grips. Stone grips? Man, you got to be kidding. It's a all stone LED lit steering wheel. Took months to build. <laughs> this is a crazy detail and I love it. Sitting at it, rubbing on it, it's coolness. It warms up to your body temperature. It is relaxing sitting in traffic, holding on to a stone steering wheel, a stone therapy. On paper, this ridiculous ride has some serious sound power, but it ain't all about volume. It's quality over quantity, baby. We could be loud, but we want sound quality at loud, natural volumes uh, versus just blaring hurting your ears loud. There's a difference. That's why we're 2018 world champion for sound quality. Ah, there ain't nothing like a nice, quiet, relaxing Sunday morning. Unless you live next to Raphael. Sometimes on the weekend, I'll prepare for a show and I'll be testing and tuning, and a cop pulled up. He was like, what are you doing? I was like, hey, I have the championship show tomorrow. I'm trying to set the system. He was like, I was two and a half miles away and just followed the sound to you. I was like, okay, I'll cut it off. And he was such a nice cop. He's like, I'm gonna give you 15 more minutes. I'll cancel all the 911 calls that's complaining about the sound. Get your system right and I hope you win. And I took those 15 minutes and I set the system. And when we did that show the next day, we came back with 12 trophies, one show. Now a sound system this crazy cannot come cheap. As soon as a kid runs up to me, oh my God, I love your car, how much it costs? My answer is always a good education. A lot of hard work sticking to the plan. Uh, so it has a more of a positive response. Brother with a ride that sounds so sweet, it's priceless. From a huge sounding Hummer to a modified Morris Minor. <laughs> New Zealand the home of epic scenery, water sports, sheep, <laughs> and a quintessential British classic. This is my Morris Minor Traveler. Launched in 48, the Morris Minor was the first British car to sell more than a million. The Traveler model was instantly recognizable from its wooden frame, but this retro runaround is a wolf in sheep's clothing. Once you get underneath it, it's a Suzuki Vitara. This two-car mashup has created a four-wheel drive mean machine. It's cool, it's an awesome four-wheel drive, and it's practical. So cool, awesome, and practical, three words. Three words and two cars combined make a true original. It's Woody. This ultimate Kiwi SUV is a one-of-a-kind mashup, stitching together a Morris Minor Traveler with a Suzuki Vitara. Shane wanted to create something truly unique, combining off-road ambitions and the history of two successful vehicles. Once completed, it was a thing of rare beauty, but this wasn't a spur-of-the-moment build. This dream was a long time in the making. I've always wanted one of those big American woodies but I could never afford one. And I saw the little Morris Minor Traveler go down the road one day and I thought, that would be cool. And I already had the four-wheel drive Suzuki, so then I came up with this brilliant idea to put them together. Having a great idea is one thing. Pulling it off, that's a whole nother ball game. Get your pens and paper out, we're gonna go through some details. So I ended up buying a two-door Morris, and then I found a second Traveler chassis and roof 
We made moulds of the roof and the side panels, so we made them out of carbon. It's got a carbon fibre roof and carbon fibre panels. I was a bit worried about the wood creaking when we were going off-roading, so we put these two roll bars in here inside. There's a whole lot of bits added together in running gear of a Suzuki Vitara four-wheel drive with a Morris Minor Traveller stuck on top. Two for one, happy life. A ride that guarantees a smile. You gotta respect that. I use it every day. It's my daily drive. I take it to work. I take it down to get a coffee, pick up the groceries, and then it takes me back to work on Monday, which is a bit of a downer. I feel you, brother. This ride might take you to the supermarket, but deep down, it's a serious SUV. This Morris takes me to all my adventure sports I want to do, mountain biking, kite surfing, paddle boarding, fishing. A custom SUV like this is hungry for one thing. Four-wheel driving. You got it. Really, it's a gnarly off-road beast. Just like its owner. drives like a Suzuki Vitara, strangely enough, except it's got this big steering wheel with this really cool horn. People, you better watch out when Woody is about. Most people that um, see it, are, they think it's pretty cool. They like taking selfies with it. They talk to me, ask me lots of questions about it. I really like hanging out at the beach. I really like off-roading. It combines the two together. It's really cool. This dude is as wild as his ride. Go for it, man. Big Mary chap comes staunching over to me and said, is this yours, bro? And I said, yeah. And he said, it's a mean ass walker, bro. A crazy cool mashup that likes to play dirty. From a modified Morris Minor to a complete custom Chimera. You thought you've seen SUVs? <laughs> Wait till you see our final ride. My name is Greg Higgs, and welcome to my playground. The whole point of this is just to be over the top absurd. This is Chimera. There's mild, wild, and then Chimera. It's just out of control. You've got rock crawling, desert bashing, kind of all the genres of off-road and truck mash into one. You can just dump diesel, the ignition in air, and let this thing eat. Easy on that throttle, brother. People are going to be calling the fire department. Fuel efficiency, forget about it. Based on the 2015 Chevy Colorado, Greg wanted to build something so over the top that everyone would take notice. The Camara has military-grade axles and was launched at SEMA in Las Vegas, but this ain't no show pony. This baby was transformed for the trails, and off-road, it becomes one reckless ride. The genesis for Chimera, this truck was just sitting in the plant. I happen to also have some huge tires, and one day I just rolled them by it, and there was no turning back. I love it. Brother, you took this a lot further than some new tires. You're ready to feel it and smell it, and you know you're driving Chimera. Holy smoke, this truck is on fire. When both turbos are engaged, it puts you back in your seat. And at that point, I am two hands every time on the steering wheel, or she will get away from you. Top speed for this thing, honestly, you're looking about 45, 50 miles an hour. Probably could do 70, 80, but it'd be like the spruce goose in that thing, feeling like you're going to come unglued. And it is going to just let it rip. You feel those turbos keep moving in. As soon as you get off onto the trail, different animal altogether. And as long as you're going five, seven miles an hour, perfect. Super comfortable off road, all the traction you need. And that's where Chimera shines. Now, this thing, when it's coming through the woods, people are going to be smiling ear to ear 
and it just looks like a movie star. This thing's out of control. Now that's Hollywood, baby. Four-wheel drive, trails, and Chimera takes all of that experience to the extreme. Being in it, you can't see a whole lot, you can't hear anything, and you're just really holding on and pounding away and trying not to get beat up on the cage and everything. That 12 valve is just rattling your bones right behind the seat. Just having that nasty attitude. The oversized shocks, the low top kind of gives it that sinister feel. This thing looks like it's angry and moving fast just sitting still. All right, it would not be a day of wheeling if you did not have to bust out your tool bag at least once. <clears throat> While we're pushing the limits of a 9,000 pound truck, crazy power, we can go fast, we can get technical in the rocks. We've got it all in one, making people smile for days. The count is smiling. Unless I'm caught driving behind you, brother. Those SUVs were outrageous. Loud, excessive, and not just for soccer moms. We'll see you next time on Ultimate Rides.